the two most common ways to handle string and Rust is by string with a capital S and a reference to a data type called str. Str is called a string slice. In this video, I'll explain the difference and when you would use one over the other. A string is a vector of UA and it must be a valid UTF-8. We haven't seen vectors yet, but for now, all you need to know here is that vectors are like array that can grow and shrink in size. So you can think about a string with a capital S as a vector of characters that can grow and shrink in size. On the other hand, ampersand sign str is a slice of u8. And this slice must be a valid utf8. Okay, you might have the question, when should I use a string with a capital S? And when should I use a reference to a string slice? And here's the simple guideline to remember. You should use a string with a capital S if you need to mutate this string or if the data needs to be owned. We have not discussed what ownership in Rust is, so for now you can keep this fact in the back of your head. On the other hand, if you need the string for read-only operations, then you should probably use the reference to the string slice. Next, let's take a look at how to create a string. So let's say that message of type string with a capital S is equal to start with a string colon colon from and parentheses and inside this parentheses we'll put our string hello rust and end it with a crab emoji so this is how you would create a string now you can also get the size of the string by saying that then the length of the string will be of type u size remember that u size is an unsigned integer where the range depends on the computer architecture if you're running a computer on a 64-bit architecture then this u size will be u64 and to get the length of the string you'll say message dot length Okay, let's print these out. Say print ln message message. Let's also print the length. Okay, and let's execute this file. Cargo run dash dash bin string. Okay, and then we see the message hello Rust with a crab emoji and the length is 15. Okay, next let's move on to string slice. Usually you will not directly deal with the type string slice str. Instead it will be behind some kind of pointer. For example, an ampersand sign. And string slice will also be immutable. There are two common ways to create a string slice. You can start with a string and then reference it to create a string slice. Or you can create a reference to a string slice by hard coding a string as a string literal. So let's see some examples. Let's start with this example, creating a string slice from a string. So let's say we have a string with a capital S. And then to create a string slice, let's say that S of type a reference to a string slice is equal to all we have to do is create a slice from this string and we saw how to create a slice in the previous video where we dealt with arrays so let's say let's get the first five words from the string message start from zero the word hello will end at index four four plus one will be five so this will be a string slice for the word hello we can also get the length of this so let's say that bang again of type u size is equal to s dot bang and let's print these out. Say slice s and then length. Execute the command and we get the slice is hello with length 5. This is the first way of creating a reference to a string slice. We started out with a string and then referenced it. The other way to create a reference to a string slice is by declaring a variable with a string literal. For example, let's say that hello of type reference to stir is equal to a string literal. Let's say hello Rust. So notice the difference here. Here we're wrapping this message hello Rust inside a function called string colon colon from. But over here we're hard coding this value hello Rust as a variable. And this over here is called a string literal. For string literals these values are stored inside the binary. After you compile Rust code this value hello Rust will be stored somewhere inside that binary. Since this value is going to be stored somewhere inside the binary, to get the value, we will need a reference to where this value is stored. Hence, you can sort of understand why when we're dealing with a string slice that we're using an ampersand sign. This value is hard-coded, stored somewhere in the binary. To get this value, we need a reference. Where is this value stored? And hence, we have an ampersand followed by the type. And it also makes sense that this value is immutable since it is hard-coded inside the binary. We can also create a multi-line string literal. Let's say that s of type reference to a stir equals to. The way you will create a multi-line string literal is by first typing r followed by a hashtag, double quotes, and then ending with a hashtag. Inside here, we can write our multi-line string literal. 
For example, let's create a multi-line JSON object. You can say A is equal to 1, B is another JSON object, C equal to 2, and let's say D is equal to 3. Okay, and let's print this out. Print ln, print this multi-line string literal, S. Execute the code, and we get the multi-line string literal. Next, I'm going to talk about DREF coercion. DREF coercion is a convenient feature in Rust that converts a reference of one type to a reference of another type. And we already saw this example, but I did not explain it until this point. So going back up, notice here that we first created a string, and then we created a slice to this string. So you might think that this should be of type string. However, it is of type str. This is DREF coercion in action. It's converting a slice, a slice of a string, into reference of str. Here's a simpler example. Let's copy this code and then paste it here. And instead of taking a slice, we can take the whole string, reference to the whole string. And notice, and you would think that the type of a reference to a string will be a reference to a string. However, we can just automatically convert a reference to a string to a reference to a string slice. This is DRF coercion in action. This is a convenient feature when you're dealing with functions. If you have a function that takes in a reference to a string slice, then to that function, you can both pass a reference to a string and a reference to a string slice. Next, let's see how you will mutate a string. For this example, I'm gonna add a reference to a string slice to a string with a capital S. So let's start with a string. Let's say let mute, since we're gonna be mutating this string, message is equal to of type string. Let's say this is equal to hello Rust. Here I use the function string colon colon from. The other way to create a string from a string literal is to say dot to string. Okay, so now we have a mutable string. Let's add a string literal to this string. Let's say message plus equals. And here we're going to add a string literal. Let's put an exclamation mark. And let's also print this out. Print ln message. Execute the code. Then we get hello Rust with an exclamation mark. For the final example of this video, I'm going to show you string interpolation. String interpolation is a handy way to mix string literals with variables. So let's say we have some variable at length is equal to, let's say, Rust. And let's also copy an emoji. And let's say that emoji is equal to this crab emoji. And let's say that message is equal to and here we're going to mix some string literals with some variables. This is called a string interpolation. To do this, we'll call the function called format with an exclamation mark. And for the message, let's first start with a string literal. Hello. And then we want to mix some variables. Here we can put a lang. And then let's next put an emoji. Emoji. The way the function format with an exclamation mark work is the same as print ln. Whatever you can do with println, you can also do with the function format. So you can also do it like this. Bang emoji. Okay, and finally, let's print this message out. Execute the code, and we get hello Rust with a crab emoji. So those were some examples of string and string slices.